So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra and Linear Factorization Theorem. Now, you know that the nth degree polynomial can have at most n real zeros. Now, in the complex number system, this statement can be improved. So what I'm saying is, is in the complex number system, every nth degree polynomial function has precisely n zeros. So it's it's important, this result is important, and it's derived, or it, it's what creates our fundamental theorem of algebra. And it was first proved by the German mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss. And he was around from like 1777 to like 1855, so he's kind of old. But gave us this great theorem, was able to prove this. So it says, if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than 0, then f has at least one zero in the complex number system. So what that's saying is that you could have a plus bi, or just the a, or bi. So using the fundamental theorem of algebra and the equivalence of zeros and factors, you can obtain what we call the linear factorization theorem. And this says that if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is larger than zero, then f of x, sorry, then f has precisely n linear factors. And so we have this equation which says f of x equals a sub n of x minus um, c sub 1 times x minus c sub 2. And it goes on until you get to x minus c sub n, where c1, c2, um, all the way to c sub n are complex numbers. So the fundamental theorem of algebra and the linear factorization theorem simply tell you only that the zeros or the factors of the polynomial exist. It doesn't tell you how to find them. This, these kinds of theorems are what we call existence theorems. So in order to find the zeros of the polynomial function, you still have to rely on some of those other techniques that we've learned. So let's take a look at this example. So it starts off and it says, a first degree polynomial, f of x equals x minus 2, has exactly one zero. Now that one zero, right, it's a first degree polynomial, so we have just the f of x, right, just the x is there, it's not an x squared, has exactly one zero. And that zero is x equals 2. We know this because we could take this and set it equal to zero, and that's pretty easy to find. So x equals 2, right? Now, counting multiplicity, this second degree polynomial of uh, um, f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 9 has exactly two zeros. And we know this because second degree polynomial and has that two there, so we have two zeros. And so we can find this by factoring. This is going to be an x minus 3 and an x minus 3 equals 0. And so when we set up our zero product property, we're going to get x equals 3 and x equals 3. So we have our two zeros. x equals 3 and x equals 3. So that takes us to our third degree polynomial, where it says f of x equals x to the third plus 4x. And it has exactly three zeros. So here we can see that we can factor out an x. That gives us x squared plus 4 equals 0. And so if we set this up, we get x equals 0 using the zero product property. And then with x squared plus 4 will equal 0, sorry. We'll get a negative 4 there. And then x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which in turn gives us x equals a plus or minus 2i. So we have our zeros are x equals 0, x equals 2i, and x equals negative 2i. Something that's important, just to kind of point out here, if you have a positive 2i, you have to have a negative 2i as well. Right, so um, we're not necessarily a negative 2i, but if you have one imaginary number, you have to have two. They come in multiples of two. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So on this next one, we have a fifth degree polynomial. We have x to the fifth there, right? So it's going to have five zeros. So it says f of x equals x to the fifth plus 9x to the third. So we can factor out an x to the third. So we're going to have x squared plus 9. And then we'll use the zero product property. 
So we'll have 0 equals x to the third. Then we'll have x squared plus 9 equals 0. So here when we take the cube root of 0, it's still a 0. So x equals 0. And then over here we'll subtract 9 from both sides. We get x squared equals a negative 9 square root. And that's going to give us x equals a plus or minus 3i. So you might be wondering, okay, well, I see that we have x equals 3i, and that x equals negative 3i, and x equals 0. But aren't I supposed to have five zeros? Well, you sure are. Sure are. But remember that over here, our x to the third, right, was equal to 0, got set equal to 0, which means that that x equals 0 repeats three times. And that's what accounts for our 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what would you do if you were asked to confirm that the third degree polynomial has exactly three zeros and that those zeros are x equals 0, x equals 2i, and x equals negative 2i? Well, we would take our x to the third plus 4x and we would set that equal to 0. Then we would factor out what they both have in common, which in this case is an x. And so we'd have x squared plus 4 left. And from here we could do the zero product property. So we would get x equals 0 and x squared plus 4 equals 0. And from there we would subtract 4 from both sides and get x squared equals a negative 4. And then square root that, and that's going to give us x equals a plus or minus 2i. And so we see that we have 1, 2, 3 solutions. So here we just got answers of x equals 0, x equals 2i, and x equals a negative 2i. Notice that here our 0 is the only real solution. These two are imaginary solutions. And so we were able to now confirm that this degree 3 polynomial has this exactly three zeros, which are x equals 0, x equals 2i, and x equals negative 2i.